Pope Francis has just released his new encyclical on the environment, Laudato Si. Here are the top 10 messages of the new encyclical. First, the big contribution of Laudato Si is an overview of the environmental crisis from a religious point of view. Until now, the dialogue about the environment was framed mainly with political, scientific, and economic language. Now, the language of faith decisively enters the discussion. Second, the disproportionate effect of environmental change on the poor is strongly highlighted in almost every page of the document, and the Pope provides many examples of the effects of climate change, whose worst impacts, he says, are felt by those in developing countries. Third, Pope Francis takes aim at the technocratic mindset, where technology is seen as the key to human existence. He critiques an unthinking reliance on market forces in which every technological advancement is embraced before thinking about how it will affect our world. Christian spirituality, by contrast, offers a growth marked by moderation and the capacity to be happy with little. Fourth, against those who argue that a papal encyclical on the environment has no real authority, Pope Francis explicitly states that Laudato Si is now added to the body of the Church's social teaching. It continues reflection on modern day problems that began with Leo XIII's encyclical Rerum Novarum on capital and labor in 1891. Fifth, discussions about ecology can be grounded in the Bible and church tradition. In chapter two, Pope Francis introduces the gospel of creation in which he leads readers through the call to care for creation that extends as far back as the book of Genesis when humankind was called to till and keep the earth. But sadly, we have done too much tilling and not enough keeping. Sixth, everything is connected. Laudato Si is a systematic approach to the problem. First, the Pope links all of us to creation. We are part of nature, included in it, and thus in constant interaction with it. But our decisions have an inevitable effect on the environment. A blind pursuit of money that sets aside the interests of the marginalized and poor and the ruination of the planet are connected. Seventh, Pope Francis does not try to prove anything about climate change. Rather, his encyclical accepts the best scientific research available today and builds on it. So Laudato Si draws on both church teaching and contemporary scientific findings from all fields to help modern day people reflect on important questions. Eighth, Pope Francis critiques those who ignore the problems of climate change and especially its effect on the poor. Why are so many of the wealthy turning away from the poor? Not only because some view themselves as more worthy than others, but also because frequently decision makers are, for the most part, removed from the poor, with no real physical connection to their brothers and sisters. Selfishness also leads to the evaporation of the notion of the common good. Ninth, perhaps more than any encyclical, Pope Francis draws from the experiences of people from around the world referring to the findings of bishops' conferences in Africa, Asia, Europe, and the Americas. The Pope calls into dialogue and debate all people about our common home. And finally, this encyclical is addressed to everyone on the planet and calls for a new way of looking at things. We face an urgent crisis when the earth has begun more and more to look like, in Pope Francis's vivid language, an immense pile of filth. Still, the document is hopeful reminding us that because God is with us, all of us can strive to change course. We can move towards an ecological conversion in which we can listen to the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor. To use religious language, what the Pope is calling for is conversion. <laughs>